season one of Peacemaker just ended, and it was a fantastic season of television. But why? What made it so great? Think Story even called it perhaps the best comic book series of all time. And I don't know if that's true. I like Daredevil a little bit better. I like WandaVision and Loki a little bit better. But it is great. So why is it great? What are the elements that James Gunn and his team bring to the table that make Peacemaker so good? Let's talk about that. This is How Stories Work with Jay Shear. And on today's show, we're talking about Peacemaker and what makes Peacemaker such a good show. Peacemaker was a character who in Suicide Squad was awful he was he was terrible and he, he was funny he was funny but he was meant to be a foil he was meant to be uh somebody that we did not really like and so when i heard that peacemaker was going to have his own tv show it would really threw me for a loop because i'm like how are they going to redeem this guy nobody likes this guy how in the world are going to they are they going to make the audience care about what happens to his character unless it's a show like you know breaking bad or something where the guy just keeps getting worse and we're just fascinated by his portrayal But James Gunn takes Peacemaker, a character we do not like, and turns him into a character that's easily lovable, a lovable character. And so how does he do that? And why is this such a good show? And by the way, like this is a show too that is like more along the lines of The Boys or Deadpool. It's trying to shock you with some of its humor, trying to shock you, trying to make you laugh. And yet, it's super heartfelt. And that is because James Gunn is a master, a master of empathy. So let's talk about how James Gunn's mastery over empathy and how we care about his characters turns this into such a great show. By the way, it's the same reason. The same reason that we love Peacemaker as a character is the same reason why the show is as funny as it is. So let's make that connection too. Why is Peacemaker great? Well, it starts with amazing characters. These are characters who are complex and nuanced. These aren't simplistic characters. They're dealing with real issues, despite the fact that this is a ludicrous show, which makes it really funny in some parts, but it's completely ludicrous. Just like Suicide Squad was. Suicide Squad was completely ludicrous at all as well. And I should note that Guardians of the Galaxy, in its own right, is fairly ludicrous as a show or as a movie. But in each of these examples, the characters, the people who we're rooting for on screen, the ones that we are starting to empathize with, are dealing with real issues and have distinct flaws, which makes them seem incredibly relatable to us. So from a storytelling standpoint... What James Gunn is doing is he's drawing us in because we know characters, people in our real life that look like this, that act like this, that struggle with some of the same things. I'll get into some specific examples later to showcase what what I mean by that. But the ultimate truth is that these characters seem real and that makes us empathize with them and sympathize with them, which makes us engaged in the show. Ultimately, when we talk about like how did this turn out to be such a great story, James Gunn understands two things, and he understands these two things incredibly well. And people who understand these two things will always be great storytellers if they apply these two things correctly. Now, a lot of things can go wrong in storytelling, and I'm sure even James Gunn would tell you, like, not everything works out the way that he would want it to. But he gets a whole crew of people to understand. When you tell a story, a lot of that storytelling process is about people and premise. The people we're relating to on the screen or in the book or through the audio book or whatever it is, and also the premise. What is it trying to prove is true about the shared human experience? It's hard to have empathy or sympathy if we have not actually had a shared experience as the characters we're seeing on screen. And the premise helps us get there. And James Gunn is great at both the people, the characters in his films, and the premise. And then he hires people who really know how to dig deeper into those characters to bring those characters to life, which is fantastic. So how would we do that? How would we do, take take a notes from, taking notes from James Gunn, how would we learn to have audiences empathize with our characters? And I think that there are three things that James Gunn does with Peacemaker, specifically this series, but with all his films, honestly, 
that allows us to get to a place where we can empathize and we can sympathize. So the difference between empathy, and by the way, when I use those two terms, empathy to me means that we can feel what the characters feel directly. We understand how they're feeling, and then we take on those emotions ourselves. Sympathy is we feel for them. So we're not feeling the same emotions that they're feeling, but we understand where they're at, and then we start to sympathize with them because we go, oh, I can understand why he's feeling or she's feeling that emotion and why... I, so I sympathize with them. So empathy, meaning we actually feel what the character feels. Sympathy being we can observe what the character is feeling and uh, understand how, why they're feeling that way. And there's three things that James Gunn includes with his characters, almost all of them, by the way. Um, and all three of those things help us to empathize and sympathize with those characters. The first is weaknesses. All of the characters have weaknesses. A big one for Peacemaker is his self-doubt. He is struggling with self-esteem. It's one of the reasons he has such a big bravado is because this guy is... And by the way, James Gunn doesn't ever tell you, oh, you know, Peacemaker suff suffers from a lack of self-esteem. No, he just shows it to you by, by showcasing it. He's got to always be tough. He's got to be the toughest guy in the room. He's got to be funny. He's got to say things that make him look more masculine. That's how we know that Peacemaker is dealing with self-doubt and self-esteem issues. Most human beings do. So there's always a place for us to empathize there. And even if we haven't dealt with that directly, we know a lot of people who have. So it's easy for us to either empathize or sympathize with that character. He also brings in character trauma, right? So character, character trauma is something that what happened to the character in the past that helps shape them. In Peacemaker, this is a big deal because we see that his father was super racist and we see that he has a history of a lot of trauma dealing with his father and his brother, which I won't get into spoilers, but there's some really traumatic events that happen to Peacemaker relative to those things. So we have weaknesses. We know what the character's weaknesses are. We also know what their past trauma is because we have had past trauma. We may have not had a racist father. Uh, we may have not had you know the kind of situation that he had with his brother, that may not be something that we experienced, but we can understand what it is to have weaknesses and what it is to experience some of that trauma as well. And we can put ourselves in that character's place. So either way, we're empathizing, empathizing or sympathizing with those particular characters. And it's not just Peacemaker, by the way. It's the same thing with, um, with, with ads, I'm not going to pronounce her name right, um, but at, with ads, ads comes, her her mom is Amanda Waller, right? And so we can sympathize, like, what would it be like to have a mom who was like that? Um, and then how is that shaping things? We also know that, there's, that she has weaknesses because she feels like she's a misfit, like she doesn't fit in on this team at all. And so we can empathize and sympathize with that as well. And we also have what is influencing these characters. So not only their past trauma, but what is also influencing them? We know that Ads, for example, has a wife that she does not get to see because of her new job. And she has to hide the fact that Amanda Waller is her mom. And so we we can we can we can know like we've had we've been in these kinds of situations before. These are really, really difficult, challenging situations. And that's what rounds out these characters. And you'll notice that in this series, in Guardians of the Galaxy, for the way, by the way, James Gunn directed Guardians of the Galaxy, he didn't get a lot of chance to actually work with the villain in that particular series with what the villain's past trauma was. And that villain was a fairly one-note villain because he had a huge crew of the Guardians of the Galaxy, which he had to develop. He does a phenomenal job of that. That's why it's my favorite of the MCU movies. Obviously, here he has lots of more episodes. So we even see, we even get some hints into the past trauma that Goff could have experienced. And that's even one of the reasons that we see Peacemaker empathizing and sympathizing with Goff, which he should have no reason to do, but he really does. He has the ability to do that because of the relationship he sort of develops with Goff. And then there's the premise. And the premise is essentially, I thought I mentioned this earlier, but the premise is essentially the thing that connects us to the shared human experience. And especially right now, this TV show, Peacemaker, has some really fascinating things to say about the shared human experience that we're all living in right now. And 
it's showcased in the development of the character. And that's always a great way to showcase premise. In fact, it's one of the best ways to showcase premise. The great book on this that you should read if you're a storyteller is Laos Agrees, The Art of Dramatic Writing. And in that book, Laos Agree talks about the shared human experience and how we see character development relative to that. So it's more of a, as opposed to like a theme that we could say like, well, there's a theme of a movie. A premise is stronger because a premise actually pervades the movie and and interacts with us at multiple different levels, especially through the characters and the different characters and how they're dealing with the events that are happening in the story. In this case, we're talking about the premise of Peacemaker and it being all about him understanding what it means to be a hero. And it's showcased because in Suicide Squad, now we're going to get into spoilers. So if you haven't seen Suicide Squad or if you haven't seen Peacemaker, like you might want to tune out now because I'm going to get a little bit into the spoilers. In Suicide Squad, Peacemaker just does what he's told. He doesn't really go outside of that. In fact, one of the traumatic events in his life is what he does to flag. That's one of the traumatic events of his life. He did that because he was under orders and he assumed that the higher powers told him what to do and therefore he did it. Fast forward to Peacemaker. We see that his father, who's a giant asshole, is the one who's been telling him what to do. And so now we can see why he developed into the character that Amanda Waller can just manipulate and have him do whatever she wants him to do. And then over the course of this TV show, what he begins to learn by overcoming some of his self-doubt and being a little bit more vulnerable, not very vulnerable, but a little bit more vulnerable with his self-esteem and his self-doubt, what he, what he does by letting people into that is he develops friendships. And he realizes that being a hero is about self-sacrifice and doing some of the things that are difficult to do um, that may not please the people above him, but will ultimately be positive experiences for his friends, the people who are becoming his new family, if you will, his team, right? And so there's this moment in, there's this really, it's a great moment, because what is the shared human experience that we're living in? We're being given a lot of information right now from a lot of different sources. And then we're seeing people question that information. And, and we're trying to figure out like, what's the best source? We've got, we've got, uh, we've got you know, pandemic information. We've got government information. All of this information is inundating us through social media. Through, and we don't know what's real anymore. Right? It's hard to know what exactly is the best source of information and is it true? We all kind of thought that once we had the internet – that it'd be easy to tell what was true and what was false. Turns out it's not that easy. It's very, very difficult. So we're all living this shared human experience. Then what does James Gunn do? James Gunn says, at the end of this film, we're going to have a moment where Goff, or Goff, Goff tells Peacemaker, Goff tells Peacemaker, you need to save the cow. You need to save the cow because you want there to be, we shared some experiences. There's no way you want us to die. You want us to keep on living. You're going to kill our species if you kill the cow. And Peacemaker takes that message in, takes that information in, realizes that he's being manipulated by information, by people who have more information than he has. He realizes that and then they kill the cow. Okay, so let's rewind this a little bit. How does a character get from here to there? And how does that development play itself out? Well, the, the, the development plays itself out because Peacemaker in Suicide Squad is willing to do whatever his father figure, in this case the U.S. government and Amanda Waller, tells him to do. And that's how he values his life. That's what he's going to do no matter what. And then in Peacemaker, we see why that is. We uncover that through his weaknesses, through his trauma, like I talked about. We start to learn. This is why this character behaves in this way. 
And as we break down this character, what we start to realize is he's befriending the other people. True friendship, not just like getting by saying, hey, you're a tough person, I'm a tough person, we'll work together. But actual true friendships. And when in that moment, when he's given that message from that lady, that lady's the, it's, it's Goff pretending to be the lady. Let's just put that out there, the detective. When he gets that message from her, he realizes that he's being manipulated. Things that she's saying aren't necessarily bad. They're not necessarily totally untrue. But he says to us later in the in the show, he, he, he says, like, like, why did he do it? And he goes, because I knew if I let the cow live, the aliens, the butterflies, would have killed all of you, meaning his friends. And so what he has decided is that he has to act with the best interest of his community. He can't act within the with the best interest of whatever father figure or government figure is telling him he should do. So now we have a shared human experience because we're living in the same way. What do we do when we go out? What do we do? Do we how do we act when we go out? How do we deal with people? And what we need to do is we need to think if those were my friends, what what should I do? What's the best decision? If I was considering it's it's basically the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And you'll notice it's really solidified in him. Because even though he kills the cow, at the end of the series, he's still feeding Goff, the butterfly, the alien butterfly, he's still feeding Goff with the food to sustain him. So we can learn by that that Peacemaker is realizing there are some decisions that I have to make here that are difficult decisions. I can't just do whatever people tell me to do anymore and feel like I'm doing the right thing. I actually have to wrestle with things and decide on what's really, truly right. And I have to make decisions uh, that treat others as I would want to be treated myself. And he's doing that, which is pretty amazing for a message. A fantastic premise. Really, really good premise. Uh, I just love everything about that. And also, I want to just point out that because the characters are so real... Same thing with Guardians of the Galaxy, same thing with Suicide Squad. Because the characters are so real, that is why we everything's funny. We can have the jokes that we have. We can have this ridiculous situation where they're trying to kill a cow. I think Think Story calls it Shop of the Hut, which I thought was pretty funny. But but that is completely ludicrous. A giant kaiju starfish is completely ludicrous. Why can we actually accept that those things are in here? Because the characters are so real and the premise is meaningful to us. And so it seems like we are dealing with some of the same issues they're dealing with. We're either empathizing with them or we're sympathizing with them. And it ends up being fantastic. And this is, uh, this is a through line of James Gunn's work. We can see him, and it probably is because some of the reason was, you know, it's probably pretty traumatic for James Gunn to be canceled by Disney the way that he was. Now, they brought him back, but because he was canceled, he, he probably felt like, well, who was there for me in those moments? Well, my true friends were there for me. And so I can't be told by these giant corporations what it is that's good or bad. And, he, and, and he's acknowledged what was good and bad too, right? So it's, 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 it's coming to terms with the story of us of our lives is figuring out how to deal with the world and the complex nuanced craziness that is the world. It causes trauma. We have our weaknesses. We have influences from other people. Those things transform us. And James Gunn is saying, let me use those things to create realistic characters. Even if they're put in the most ridiculous situations, these are real people. They seem real and they're meaningful to us. And they develop over the course of time. So those are some of the reasons I think that Peacemaker is a really good show. I do think it's a little bit unnecessarily crass at times. They like to use a lot of cuss words that I actually, actually think kind of take away from some of the jokes. Because um, I, you know, I, I don't mind if they cuss. But sometimes those things can be so over the top that it's like, well, you've already said the F word like 15 times in this episode. So when you say it the 16th time, it takes away from the punchiness of the joke that could have been there. Some of that I think is due to, I'm just guessing here, but I've heard that there's a lot of improv on that show. So that's probably what has to, de that probably has to deal with that a little bit. But 
Anyways, I think Peacemaker is great. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if there's other shows you'd like me to talk about and break them down in some of these kinds of ways, then let me know. But that was a great finale. Cannot wait for season two. James Gunn is back writing and directing, so we can almost be guaranteed that we're going to get a similar type of approach with people and premise that really resonates. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next show.